I have I have five o'clock, so let's go ahead and start this meeting. Uh, Leslie, uh, make note that everyone is here by video conference, including the city manager, uh, the finance director, uh, somebody's dog, and uh, Larry Hoover. Melissa Daly is here too. And Melissa Daly, sorry, I forgot about that. So we got everybody here, uh, items for consideration. And uh, George. May I uh, send a note that essentially we listed three items and the purpose of that was to have these, this meeting posted in the event we needed it for one of several reasons. So the first item on this agenda is would be to consider an ordinance with new doing your emergency declaration for your desire to do that today. The reason is that your ordinance that the council adopted, adopting your last order, goes through the end of April. So unless there's a need, uh, and, and that we adopted automatically adjust with any changes that either the governor or the county judge make in their order. So, We've got this item posted again for next Tuesday on the assumption that the governor or the uh, county judge may adopt a new order or new their order, and you would need to adopt it April the 30th. So we've got another date next week when that could be done before the end of the month. There's no reason at this point act by the number one. Well, we do have we do have a question, George, popping up um, on the group chat from Joe Palmer. Um, uh, Leslie, can you uh, activate Joe Palmer and let him ask his question? Can you hear me? Yeah. Mayor? Yes. Mr. Mayor, hi. Uh, thanks for having the meeting. Uh, I don't have any questions at this time. I did want to comment briefly uh, whenever whenever that opportunity is available, sir. Well, we don't we don't have a comment section this time around, uh, Joe, but if there was yeah, something public. you want to comment on, uh, th those rules are, are suspended by the governor. And since this isn't a regular meeting, it's one of our emergency meetings. So uh, if, if it's a pressing thing, uh, certainly, but it, it'll be on the next, we'll have a citizen's forum on the next meeting. Is, okay. is it pressing? I appreciate that. And it's it's not pressing if, in fact, you are not intending to vote on the extension of this tonight. Is that true? We are not, we, we're not intending on any votes tonight, uh, Joe. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All all right, so we're not. We're going to move on that. Uh, we don't have any uh, items related to the coronavirus emergency, right, George? No, well, we don't have. And again, that was on there in case something new or unexpected came up related to the virus and or operational issues associated with that. There are none that we bring up and visit about. Again, next Tuesday, in the event, we need to discuss any issues related to the virus uh, between now and then. So, there's no uh, need for action on this item either. But council has questions. George, you might want to try turning off your video, lowering your bandwidth so that we could hear your audio a little bit easier. Ah, sorry. You're because assuming I can argue out how to do that. Um, no, Leslie, can you suggest how I do that? I think you just did it. Oh, that's good. Yes. yes. All right. All right. Hopefully, I'll get the connection better next time, or I'll go somewhere else to try to do the meeting next Tuesday. Well, let's get to item three Again, discussing on item that. number two. Yeah, there, there's no issue. So we're going to go to item number three, George. Okay. Uh, you want to talk you want to talk briefly about the EDC meeting last night and their thoughts? Right. We had 
uh, discussion about this possibility of some kind of economic assistance local small businesses with the EDC board last night. The reason for that is we were considering the potential use of EDC funding if we were to go into a program at all. Uh, bottom line is there are still so many unanswered questions and a little bit of concern on our part that with the limited funding that we have or that the, can you hear me? Maybe no, I'll say uh, how to do this on my phone. Not really well. And Melissa, can you chip in on it? You were in the meeting and you can sum it up as well. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm muted, hold on. Okay, sorry, I forgot to unmute. Um, we uh, talked to the EDC about uh, different options, um, particularly in terms of providing a grant to small businesses um, that have been affected by COVID. Um, we went into some discussion about the impact on the payroll protection uh, program that the Small Business Administration is administering um, and possible duplication of benefits for that as well, uh, which the, the plan that we talked about wouldn't potentially uh, conflict with that because we were looking at a marketing program where the businesses would market the city and or the EDC um, through those funds. Um, but we also talked about the possibility of what's called idle funds, economic impact disaster uh, funding that uh, small businesses are going to be reaching out for. Those are loans up to $2 million, uh, which allow for up to six months of operational funds. Um, and there's a, there's a possibility that the funds could be could be seen as revenue if they're not matched with expenditures. Um, so we kind of went through all of that, that discussion, the EDC, um, I'm sorry, one more thing. We also talked about um, what the city is doing. Um, right now our staff has developed a, a website that is, um, should go live this evening or tomorrow morning um, that allows for businesses to fill out a form online that um, tells us um, what they are doing um, in this time. So for example, uh, say if Burger Box has a curbside drive-through traps um, delivery through DoorDash or what have you, um, they can tell us that information and we'll have a list of local businesses and what they're doing and what they're doing differently so that people that want to shop local can um, take advantage of that, look at those lists, as well as some marketing um, opportunities for us to do um, a unified message with posters and um, like yard signs that are put out around the city to shop local. So we had all of that conversation. Those things that I mentioned um, specifically that we're doing can be done regardless of what the EDC or the city does in terms of funding. Um, where they landed was setting aside some a uh, little bit of funds for the printing of those materials now so we can go ahead and get that messaging out. Um, and there was some discussion also of, uh, of uh, delaying the, um, uh, the rent for some of the businesses that uh, are renting from the EDC. Um, and you might correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they decided to hold on that as well. Um, so I think at the end of the day, the EDC, like I said, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the EDC decided to, to hold on funding, um, direct funding to wait and see what, um, would, uh, what the businesses were going to do in terms of applying for federal funds, as well as potential state funds. There's, I guess, a conversation going on now with the state of Texas in terms of potential help for businesses as well. Um, and then to go ahead and proceed on um, that marketing program that we're already working on with the website for businesses and the local messaging to buy local. Yeah, and Melissa, one of the issues we've, we've come across is that it's possible that if we were to give a grant of 5,000, that might take out 5,000 from what they give the federal government and therefore we would be essentially subsidizing the federal government. 
essentially. Um, there, like I said, there's two programs, the payroll protection. If you provide money for either operations or payroll and they're applying for that PPP program, um, that's a forgivable loan. Um, but if we provide funding for that same purpose, it's considered a duplication of benefits and that amount would not be uh, forgiven. They would have to repay the federal government. On the idle loans, the economic injury uh, loans, that's a similar situation in that whatever revenue they uh, got would uh, from the city or from the EDC that's not offset by expenses directly from that source um, would be seen as a revenue source and therefore they'd be able to get less of a loan amount for operational expenses from the idle uh, loan program. Even, even a rent forgiveness would be considered a income source. Uh, yes, it, it could. And I think what was discussed last night was delaying rent. Uh, I think that was mostly the conversation was, um, I apologize, was the opportunity to delay rent rather than forgive it. And in that case, as long as it was um, paid at a later time, that shouldn't be considered revenue. Uh, all right, uh, would you, uh, Leslie, put Joe on? He had a question. Can you hear me? Yeah, gotcha. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate the uh, the new information on on this issue that you're dealing with as far as helping out the local businesses. It sounds to me like uh, of what we do know or of what uh, you guys know, um, there are conflicts uh, as far as where the funding can come from. If funding comes from multiple different governmental bodies, that it might negate one of them or, or cause one of them to be a, a revenue source, like you said. Um, right. I would just say, just broadly speaking, that of all the governmental entities that are involved with this thing, uh, the ones that have the ability to, to fund, or not fund, but to assist local businesses would be the state, but largely the federal government. Um, that would leave the city of Kennedale to do some things that, that you know you have the capacity to do, which would be to uh, affect the, the permit schedule. Um, you can ease up on local businesses as far as the permit process. You can do what you can to speed up the permit process for businesses to basically make it as easy as possible for businesses to make money as fast as possible. Within reason, we're not asking for the Wild West here. Um, you know, as far as making signs, uh, spending money on making signs and advertising, um, when that was mentioned, it reminded me of a billboard that I see. Uh, it's not the only one in the state. Uh, Everman ISD, when you're going south on 35W, there's a big billboard, um, Everman ISD. So I guess people driving through 35W, you know, weren't considering moving to Everman or putting their kids in Everman school until they saw that billboard. Uh, the point that I'm trying to make uh, very gently is the, the entities that know best how to market and who to market to are the businesses themselves. They know where their customers are. They've got their phone numbers. They've got their addresses. They've got their contact information. And they know how to get more uh, of that. They can be aggressive and they can do those things. I really don't think that it's the, uh, I don't think that's your expertise is drumming up business for local for local businesses i would say just more more specifically stay out of the local businesses way find ways to um, unencumber them i heard the other day that there were uh, code compliance officers out um, i'm just going to say they were dealing with people who live in the city um, why not let them deal with people who live in the city maybe two days a week instead of five business days a week um, put those code compliance officers to work uh, helping businesses get their permits through. Um, I, and a question I had was, you know, to reinforce my point that I'm making, and I appreciate you listening to me this evening. Where is the money going to come from that the EDC supposedly has to give to businesses? Is it, is it just a, a flow through where money would come from the federal government, where, you, where the EDC or the city turns to the federal government and says, okay, we've helped you know, 30 businesses, here are the businesses and here's the, here are the amounts that we've given them. So we therefore are here now applying for that same amount of money. Is, is that the scenario or, or where can I find out more about where you think that money's gonna come from? All right, uh, thank, thank you, Joe, for that input. Thank you, it's helpful. Um, 
Uh, Melissa, we're, we're, do we have George back yet or not? You know, you could have him call in. Um, some yeah, I see in the text. Okay. Yeah. Did, did George call in? Uh, am I on? Yes. Okay. So, George, um, when we talk about EDC money, we don't have a lot of money in the EDC, but that money is mainly from the land sales that we just had, correct? The, the money that we were, we were talking about potentially was in the sale of two lots in Washington. And we're talking about that's the money that we just recently received from the sale of those two lots. Uh, we can't hear you very well, George. Melissa, would you want to repeat that? Uh, you, I didn't hear him either. <laughs> um, but the, the most of the funding, I, I don't have the financial. Lakita could probably answer that. But um, we had uh, two land sales um, that there's approximately $150,000 from those two land sales uh, that have uh, are in the EDC account. The EDC um, has has a budgeted end of the year fund balance of four hundred and thirty four dollars. So at the end of the year, we have that amount in fund balance that's budgeted for. In addition to the fund balance, what was discussed at the meeting was um, the use of the funds from the sale of those two um, lots of um, properties. And I believe each one of them may have sold for approximately seventy two thousand or some number close to that. So that, that's what the EDC discussed last evening. One, one sold for 75, the other one sold for 82, but of course there were closing um, expenses on each one of those. So we see the question here is that we've got duplication of funds that could be coming in. We also have a low fund balance in the EDC, which makes it a little bit more difficult um, for us to actually do anything right now until we have more information that we're not going to be, re, you know, really subsidizing the federal government or interfering with somebody else's loan. Is that correct? Um, uh, I don't know. Are you asking me? I don't know if George is online. Yeah, I'm asking you because I can hear you. Okay. And I can hear um, that, that's correct. I mean, I, I think with um, the payroll protection or the idle, either one we may run into, we will on the payroll protection run into a duplication of benefits um, if you're providing any kind of operational funding. On the idle, you're um, the the only challenge with that is that it would be perceived as it would be seen as revenue if it wasn't all expended directly on marketing expenses. Questions from council? Mayor, you had someone raise their hand. I have someone else raise their hand. Who had raised their hand? Hold on, sorry. Uh, it's a phone number ending in 0380. Is that George? Good day. I'm unmuting. I am what? George. <laughs> Hi. Man. I'm assuming you cannot hear me. Now we hear you much better now. Now we can. And you look a lot better. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Uh, I try to do my best. Well, I, I think that Melissa and Lakita answered those questions very well, so I don't know that I have anything to add. So. Any questions from the council? All right, not hearing anything. George, um, uh, I need an information only. We can't have a discussion about it uh, because it's not on the agenda, but just a manager information. What's the latest on the uh, water bill issue? We can't ask him questions because it's not on the agenda, but I want this out there for we people to know. Mayor, let me give you just a, a brief summary. And and if I get anything wrong, Lakita can, can follow up. But essentially, this goes back to back in March when we made a decision to have the city of Arlington manually read our meters because of problems we were having with Verizon and the connection to the old meter reading system. We had Arlington agreed to do that and had set aside three days to read those meters. 
I think it was April 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. And, of course, that was just before the holidays. And they did that, but ran in ran into significant problems because, frankly, the meters had not been read manually for several years. Some of them were hard to find, etc. The bottom line is on the just before the bills went out on about the 8th, on the 10th, just before Easter, we learned that there were some significant problems. Uh, we've been doing research since then. There are about 200 accounts that were misread, and it goes into the detail, really, that we're finding out today is that it has to do mostly with meters that were read by Arlington trying to do this to avoid estimating any bills, but there were some technical problems with how the meters were read and the number of digits that they were entering before a decimal point. I, I can't get into all of the details, but I think today we've determined we know what the problem was, and probably on the 15th we will be sending out corrected bills to those accounts we've been able to identify were erroneous. And I think that we will have corrected amounts on all of those bills, either through new manual readings and entering data by muni billing, or we will estimate the bills for a few of those accounts, uh, which occurs from time to time. So I think we finally identified the technical problem, and we should have it corrected and new bills sent out about the 15th, between the 15th and the 17th. And the stormwater uh, drainage fee? The, the, stor the stormwater fee was a function, and it was an error really on our part because we had notified Muni Billing to put the new charges, the additional dollars, into the, uh, in, onto the accounts because we had to be effective April 1st with the expectation that the ordinance was going to be passed on March the 17th. So we gave that information to them. They entered the information. And then when we had to cancel a meeting on the 17th, we failed to tell them to retract that. And that additional dollar went out on the bills. Muni billing has now given credit to each of the accounts for that $1 for the month of April that was billed in error. And that item will be on your agenda in May because we've had to re-advertise the hearing and the ordinance will now not be effective until June the 1st, assuming council adopts it. So it was an error in not retracting the information from Unibilling after we had to cancel the council meeting. And, and Akita, do you have anything else to add to that? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Um, no, George got it right. Um, normally, we have a meeting with Muni Building on a monthly basis to just kind of review everything and see if we have any updates. When I met with them in February, I went ahead and told them to mark their calendars for April 1st because that is when the, um, the new stormwater fee was going to be effective on the bills. And um, we did, we ended up not meeting in March because of the COVID-19. And when our council, regular council meeting got moved to the next uh, week, um, I, we failed to communicate back with the Muni building and to tell them to take that, that marker off of their calendars. And so by the time we realized that we didn't communicate to them that the ordinance wasn't signed like we thought it would be, they had already billed. And so I went ahead and asked them to just go ahead and credit everyone's account back the $1 and then we would revisit it in May. We have to re-notice and everything again. So, um, you know, that's kind of what happened there. And George, we'll have a full report on this at the next regular meeting next week. 
for well, comments? Yeah, I've given you pretty much as much information as I have today, uh, but we will update it before the meeting on the 21st next week. And that we'll have it on there, at least in the workshop, so we can have a discussion of it in case council has any questions. Sir, we can do that. Yeah. All right. Well, then, um, I think that's all we have on this agenda. Uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, it's good to know that it works. Uh, that's a positive. And everybody can hear it, but except for one person, we shall name nameless, George Campbell. Um, but um, please, uh, let's get ready for next week's meeting and uh, we'll get it going. It'll be a long meeting, right, George? Well, we do have a pretty long agenda because we're placing things back on there that we've had to postpone because of doing video conferencing, trying to learn how to do it and keep the agenda short because of COVID. But yes, it should be a relatively long agenda. And, and uh, yeah, I will say thanks to Joe for being our, our guest here. So we know how to do the questions exactly right. So we got, we know how to get our questions in and answer those questions. All right, so all I need is a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Sandra. Second. I have a second from somebody. Chad? That was me. Yeah. All right. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any abstaining? Motion passed unanimously. This meeting is adjourned. And it will be posted, right, Leslie? Yes, it will. All right. So you'll be able to watch this uh, live rather than just from my Facebook live page. All right, well, thank you, everybody, and uh, stay safe. We, you know, we're still down to one case. Let's keep it that way. And shout out to Chad and Jan for putting out the, um, the masks. Thanks, Chad. Thanks, Jan. <laughs>